Okay, so this is a new video, and I want to talk about a couple things in this video. I don't know if I'm going to put it all into a single video or not, but um, there's a number of things I wanted to discuss. But um, the main thing is is this uh, a principle of called magnetic structure or magnetic structures, and I have a number of ideas um, having to do with magnetic structures. So I'm just going to kind of briefly touch on them, go through them, and then put all the other ideas that I had as well. Um, I just want to kind of, I'll just state what these things are and not go into too much detail, and then I'm just going to put the other ideas. So, um, a magnetic structure is a dynamic system. So I want to say that first. A magnetic structure is also a stable magnetic pattern. Likewise, I'm using the word that it's it is a holon or that it is holistic meaning that w when you take a magnetic structure it is a single kind of system um, that's whole that's kind of complete so like a human being would be representative of a magnetic structure or a tree or um, even an earth or a sun all magnetic structures are open systems and given that they being open, uh, being that they are open to other magnetic structures as well as the larger kind of magnetic, I don't know, I guess for lack of a better term, the background magnetic field, uh, north and south spin and current flow alternation uh, occur at all scales um, within, not just internally within. Um, magnetic structures but within all magnetic systems um, likewise there are balanced or unbalanced magnetic structures and all magnetic structures occur which I already stated but I say it again all magnetic structures occur they're not only open to other magnetic structures they're not only open systems in that sense in the larger magnetic field but they occur within a larger uh, background magnetic field and maybe there's better terms for that but what I want to now that I've kind of laid out those ideas I'm not going to detail each of those points um, but I want to talk about balanced and unbalanced magnetic structures first and then touch on some other points that are I think important to understanding magnetism and magnetic structures now the, the theory that I'm coming to is that there are three basic types of uh, magnetic structures balanced as in the human being the human system um, unbalanced north meaning that there's a preponderance of the north magnetic spin or north magnetic currents and a snake is like an extreme example of that kind of unbalanced north and then the unbalanced south meaning that there's a preponderance of the south magnetic spin and an elephant is an extreme example of that so when you take very slight creatures very large creatures they're each examples of these unbalanced uh, magnetic structures and then a human being which has a more balanced you know more of a clear bilateral symmetry and so on that's clearly defined you have evidence of a balanced uh, magnetic structure now there's a couple of things that are important to note about the human uh, structure and at the insights it gives into the unbalanced structures one thing that's important is there's a minimum of release or emission of photons or electrons or electrons or photons so that means all of that the, the photon whatever photon activity or electron activity is pretty much happening internally within a balanced system however uh, when you get to the unbalanced systems, and I don't know exactly how it works, and I don't even know if I have the categories right, but I'm certain that there are two unbalanced systems and then one balanced system, you know, two unbalanced magnetic structures and one type of balanced magnetic structure. And there may be various variations within all that, but um, one of these categories is where you have electron emission. So eels, stingrays, electric animals. I don't know if it's the unbalanced north or the unbalanced south. And then the other one you have photon emission. Fireflies, you know, uh, bacteria, bioluminescent animals. 
So these are very relevant categories right away because uh, my basic theory is that magnetic structures are directly connected with electron and photon emissions. And you can see this in some of the magnetic structures. In other words, why do electric eels, stingrays, etc. release electricity because of their magnetic structure? Why do fly, fireflies, bacteria, etc. release photons, light, because of their magnetic structure? And this is why it's very relevant. Um, but there's something else that's interesting. These three categories that I pointed out kind of harken back to Ayurveda, which has these three categories of types of human beings, kapha, pitta, and vada. And then, you know, the three uh, psychological body types, you know, the endomorph, the mesomorph, the ectomorph, all of these correlate directly. In, in other words, one kind of individual that's real slight and slim, one that's larger physically, and then one that's kind of in the middle. Um, very interesting points. But I want to move on to more interesting questions that are, you know, within the whole realm of magnetic structures and magnetic systems and that are relevant points. So I'm just throwing a bunch in this video. Um, but this is really interesting here. Um, the question of how to generate magnetic current flows. Um, I, I think the key criteria that I'm, I'm, as I'm looking at it, I think that the cre key criteria is to offset magnetic positioning or placement. And so what you would do is you would take these magnets and you would orient them you would offset their positioning and you would line them up in this way so that north flows to north and south flows to south. And you might be able to, uh, through this, this kind of array, um, set up or generate a measurable or predictable magnetic current flows north and south. Now, other, other kind of arrangements are kind of like this, where you have four norths kind of pointing towards each other and they might create a or four souths, and they might create a spin kind of in the middle there between them. Another orientation where, again, you have this offset, uh, you know, um, magnetic positioning or placement is, is very similar to this, but it's just a zigzag pattern, but you have it so that the north or south, you can have a flow, a, a continuous north uh, spin or or south spin, you know, going down this little, ch you know, magnetic channel or what have you. Now, another array is kind of like a circular or, uh, I don't know, I guess you could do a square one as well. I'm not really sure. But what you have here, the way I've drawn this is you have the norths are on the outside, the souths are on the uh, the inside. The, the basic pr prediction is, is that there will be, there could be a, a measurable magnetic current flow of, of a south magnetic current flow on the inside of this, which I don't know exactly, I, I'm a, I think it goes clockwise, but I'm not sure about that. And then there could be, there's a measurable north magnetic current flow on the outside, I think it goes anti-clockwise, but again, I'm not sure about all the directions. But the key point is, the way to generate magnetic current flows is to offset magnetic through off offset magnetic positioning or placement like so you know so you you kind of and and specifically offsetting north relative to south i think that's an important point to throw in there that the south has to somehow be differentiated and separated from the north and vice versa but then there's one more thing that's this is i think even more interesting in some respects or even more important than some of the other stuff that I've been talking about which are just kind of more theoretical um, which is magnetic behavior versus magnetic current flow um, there's this question of why do magnets attract or rep repel I didn't frame it as a question but I think this is kind of a better sense of how it works rather than the way that is often described, and I mean, I don't even know if it's described really very well at all, but um, this is the basic, from the standpoint of magnetic current flows, this is the, and, and spins, magnetic spins, this is the basic kind of principle of, of how it works, and also why the, the terms attractive and repulsive, or to attract and repel, may not be the correct terminology. So, here you have 
two magnets, they're both oriented south to south. So they're spinning in the same direction. Now the question is why do they would they repel? Well, because they're spinning in the same direction. It's just like if you took two tires that were spinning in the same direction and you and they were spinning very rapidly and you brought them together, what happens? They shoot off. One shoots off this way, one shoots off that way. This is why they repel. Very simple. So the principle is current spinning in the same direction so it repels or is repulsive or rather it's reactive so it's not much different than anything else we see in physics so what's happening here is no different than anything else we know of in physics at all likewise here's this other spin right here we have a north and a south so they're both spinning in opposite directions you bring them together now the question is they're spinning in different directions. Why do the magnets come together and stick together? Well, currents spinning in opposite directions attract, are attractive, or are rather compulsive. So what this means is the one force is reactive. They react to each other in a way that shoots one off this way and shoots one off that way. In this scenario, there it's a compulsive force. Because their spins are going one this way, one that way. The magnets, because of the current spin forces, the magnets are compelled to stick together. So it's actually mag it's evidence and proof in both of these instances of magnetic current flows and that the, the terms attractive, uh, attractive on this side and repulsive on this side may not be accurate. The more accurate terms may be compulsive and reactive or something comparable. Um, the The... The, the, the key thing to recognize as well is that, that what's interesting about this, this actually just confirms or proves that north and south magnetic currents flow north to north and south to south. The magnets just give a certain impression, but they're actually confirming magnetic current flows. They're actually confirming the basic principles. So still, you could probably see that if, if, if we can line up the magnets in the right way, we should be able to orient you know with the correct orientation like that offset placement that was shown we should be able to come up with measurable south magnetic current flows and north magnetic current flows presumably that go in different directions opposite directions because they're opposite spins but there may be more you know to it than that but these are just you know things to when you're thinking about magnetism really look at it in a larger kind of way and try to uh, put it all together. So I hope that's helpful, and uh, if I have any more to add, I'll add it. Thanks. Bye.